Hey Power Appers, this is Brian Knight from PragmaticWorks. Are your developers and admins struggling with deployment of your assets from development to QA to production? Well, in this video, we're going to show you how to simplify that with pipelines. So stay tuned. Pipelines make it super easy for you to develop all of your solutioning around the Power Platform from development to QA to production. And this video will show you the steps that are necessary to make that work. Our first step we're going to show you is configuration of the environments. Then we're going to go through and turn on all the tooling that is necessary for our environment. And then lastly, we're going to configure the tooling and then share it with users. To do this, I've set up a dev, which is going to be uh, represented here, development right here, a test environment, and a production environment also, all simulated in my case. We're also going to then uh, use one more environment for handling of all the tooling necessary to do this. Now this could be installed, this tooling could be installed in your development environment also, but in my case, I'm preferring to keep it completely separate so we can have one environment that instruments all this. In my case, I chose to use my COE toolkit environment, my center of excellence toolkit environment, where all my admin stuff is at anyways. So to start with, let's turn on the ability to do this. The three environments that are participating, not necessarily the tooling environments, optional there, but for our dev, QA, and production environment must all be managed environments. Now managed environments can be turned on by simply selecting the environment you wanna do, and you'll see either edit managed environment if it's already a managed environment, or in my case right here, we'll see enable managed environment. So when I click on this, this is going to turn on a bunch of extra governance ideas, and Microsoft is investing a lot more in these managed environments. For this to work, the developer or the, uh, the, the users in this environment must be licensed as a premium user. That's the caveat to this, but, but pipelines are one of the big key areas. If you're using things like Dynamics or di Dataverse applications, this is a great way of doing this, uh, of keeping everybody's premium already. So go ahead and use this uh, as a no-brainer to use these uh, managed environments. So I'm going to skip what these are for the time being, but I'm just going to hit the Enable button, and this is going to turn on the ability to do this. All right, that's now turned on. Let's go to where my tooling is going to be installed next. I've got an environment here called the COE Toolkit. I'll select that environment. Then on the right side, I'll go ahead and select uh, the Dynamics 365 apps. Then I'll do install app to get this working. Once I do that, I'm looking for uh, Power Platform Pipelines. Say that 10 times faster. Power Platform Pipelines. Select it and then hit next to turn it on after you agree with this. And now we can see it's done because if I scroll down, we can see now that the pipelines is installed. So what does this give us? This gives us a new application that when I go over to make.powerapps.com, and I'll just go ahead and, and, and just open up a new tab here, I'm going to go over to my COE environment. There we go. And when I go to that COE environment, we're going to see a new app that was installed, and it was called Pipeline. I'll just, I'll just go ahead and search for it. There it is, deployment pipeline configuration. Now this takes us to our third step. We've now created the environments, we set up the application. Now we actually need to use an application to configure all of our environments and all the stuff in those environments. The first thing you'll notice here is a nice dashboard which will come back and this dashboard will start to be populated later. But when I go to environments, we can see a list of all the environments that are participating in our pipelines. So you only need one instrumentation, one orchestration uh, app to do this, one environment that handles this. It could be one of your environments that's doing the dev, QA, and prod. In my case, I chose one because I have multiple dev, QA, and prod environments, but it's com completely up to you on how you configure it. When you hit new under environments, we're gonna see that it's asking us, well, what is the name of the environment? We have an environment type and an ID. So my first one will be my, you know, Brian Dev, we'll call this. Not exactly the right name, but what really matters here is my development environment. Development will always be the, the, uh, the development environment, and then every other environment we target environments for, de for uh, QA and prod. Uh, the reason why is your uh, target environments will receive a managed solution, one where the code cannot be changed. Uh, 
Now, I also need an environment ID. Now, I've already copied these out from Notepad, but just to show you where I'm getting these, I'll go back over to the Admin Center, click Environments, choose whatever environment you want. Like this is my dev environment. Let me go ahead and sort by this. And I have this uh, Brian Knight dev environment. When I select this, we'll see an environment ID right here. I'll just go ahead and copy that ID. There we go. And I'll paste that into my other engine. So if I go back over the application, there we go. I'll paste that in and I'll call this uh, oh, Brian Dev. It doesn't, matter, it doesn't really matter. It's just more for, for use, use case here. And then I'll hit save and close. Now, once you save and close this, we'll watch this validation status change over time where it makes sure that everything I entered is correct. It takes about, about five or so seconds and there we go. Let's go and enter the next ones next. So I'll have, uh, this will be, you know, Brian test. And I'll go ahead and paste in the IDs this time. All right. This will be a target this time. And paste in my ID. Then I'll add one more. This will be Brian Prod. Again, I'll copy and paste that, that uh, GUID in there again. Again, it's target as well. And then paste that in. So we now have our environments now in here. We have our uh, dev, test, and prod. And if I refresh this by now, everything says success. Do not move forward unless everything success success. That means you probably copy and pasted an ID wrong. After that, I'll go to pipelines and I'll create a pipeline. The pipeline is the act of moving this from dev to QA to prod. I could have one pipeline that goes from server some, from environment A, B to C, and another pipeline that goes from environment A to, to X to Z. So you can configure these based on the different pairs of server of environments that you want to send. So for this, I'll call this, you know, dev, QA, and prod environment migration. And this you can put your server names there or whatever, or your environment names there, or whatever you wish. Put whatever description you wish and then save, but don't save and close. Next, pick your dev environment. I'll hit new dev environment. Uh, I'll just call this dev, point to my development environment. Uh, and again, oh, sorry, not dev environment. Sorry, I wanna add an existing one. Excuse me. I'll go up here and add existing environment. I already have the environment created, so I didn't need to hit the new one, but I'll go ahead and point to my dev environment. There we go, done. We'll see that down, down here. Down at my, my stages here, I'll go ahead and create a stage for each of the legs of my deployment. So I'll have my first leg will be dev, uh, we'll go to uh, dev to QA. Okay. Uh, the previous stage will be non-existent in this case because I'm starting here. My target environment, if I hit the magnifying glass, will be my test environment. And then I'll hit save and close. My next stage will be you know, QA to prod. Again, you call this whatever crib note you want to call it. My previous stage this time does have a previous stage. It's my dev to QA. And then my target environment this time is the prod environment. So essentially what's going to happen here is I'll have two boxes. One will say you want to go from dev to QA, and the next one will say QA to prod. And you can hit the button there next to each one to then deploy it to each of those environments. Let's try it now. So what I've done, if I go back to my solution, is I've created a solution with one test environment variable, and then I also have my test right here as well, you're seeing, my, my table of sorts. Then if I just go over here where it says pipelines, this little icon, rocket ship icon, I can go ahead and refresh this, and we should start to see a new pipeline now involved. If you don't see this, there's one more step you have to do. Let's show you that step real quick so you can see what that is. And that's the final step of how we share this with others. To share this with other people that you want to have the permission to do this, you would simply go to your admin center and you would go to the environment that you wish. In my case, it's my COE environment. It's wherever the instrumentation is being done. All right. And then once you go to that environment, choose a user that you want to share this with. I'll just pick a random user here like Ace. I will then uh, look at her, look at the security roles for Ace, and you'll notice here as I go down, there's a few new roles under pipelines. There we go. One is for pipeline user, 
This allows ACE to go out and actually run the, the pipeline for deployment of a solution. And then pipeline administrator gives that person the ability to also do things like uh, uh, seeing of the reports and looking at the dashboard and getting all the artifacts out and all those kind of things, They're using the app that I just used a moment ago. So when I save that for ACE, ACE can now see the reports and also go out and do the actual pipeline itself. So let's go back over here again. And uh, we want that also for the environment that we wish to do this with. All right, so here we go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go oh, back to my solution here. I'll hit deploy here. It's gonna ask us a few things. Keep in mind, I do have, I can say, do I want to do it now or in the future? I'm gonna say, do this now. I do have an environment variable. So it might actually prompt me now for any environment configurations, things like connection references, all those kind of things would be in this next screen after it does a validation. It also creates a documentation for each, each deployment as well. That can be generated from AI if you wish, or it can be hand typed here. All right, now that the first deployment is done, we can deploy now to production. I'll hit deploy here, and we'll walk the same, the same wizard we just did. Hit next again, and we're ready to go to production. This is sending a managed solution from dev to QA, and then now, now we're going to production now. Again, I can apply the same uh, AI notes we already had in here, and then to hit deploy here now as well. Now, we're not going to wait for this to finish, but just a few notes while we're here. You'll notice that we have multiple pipelines we can choose from. In our case, only one that we just created. But if we had another, another path to get there from dev server, dev, dev uh, environment two to QA2 and to, to prod2, we can do that here as well. We can also see the run history of every one that's done and which ones are deploying. But we also have this really nice report over here that when I go back to my dashboard, we're starting to see stuff start to light up now. And as I scroll down, we'll see the, the successful ones and the uh, failures all inside of here. If we go over to run history, we can see our two runs that's been started and succeeded. We can go inside that QA deployment right here and actually see what happened what kind of operation details are here, even get a backup of the solution file that was run inside of here. You're gonna find that in our solution artifacts. Uh, so we go to solution artifacts and go inside of this. We can see an extract of that managed solution and unmanaged solution right here as well. That's why it does take a little bit longer, but no exporting and importing, everything just works. To see this, you'll need that pipeline administrator uh, access to see this in, in this case. Uh, but it gives you a lot more uh, interactivity you can do inside of this. Now, lastly, if I go over to my other environment, my, my simulated test environment, there we go, we should now see inside of here a new solution that was installed. Let me go over to solutions. And I called it test pipeline project. There it is. And inside this, you can see it's managed, but my table is here. Everything I need to make this work is now here. Now, if I make a change, no problem at all. I'll make my change to development, go back to my pipelines, and then after I do that, we'll see that changed, uh, the ability to deploy that change to each of the environments at that point also. But there is my, my, uh, my table right here. And then again, if I go back over to my development environment, uh, actually, it's already open, I believe. There it is. We can see it's still deploying right now. Same version 102. But again, if I just go back over to my objects and just uh, make, a make a quick change here, like add a new column. There we go. Blah, blah, blah. Hit save. And then now I can go back to pipelines and why I'm going to production with 1001, I can deploy to QA 1002. Again, you'll find that under the pipeline option and then hit deploy here and then walk the wizard over again. So that's all there is to it. This makes things so much simpler from a deployment perspective. So when you're looking at deploying from dev to QA to production, if you wanna really simplify that managed environment, pipelines is the way to go. It takes all the guesswork out of having to export and import in, helps you get extra diagnostic information. It runs things like Solution Checker. Now, the question I always get asked is, you know, Brian, can we extend this? Can we add things like approvals in here and all that? You can absolutely do that as well. You can add, you have, there's instrumentation here and, and pre-checks and post-checks you can do to extend it to have your own types of, of access into that as well. So if you wanna have 
uh, approvals from change management, you can do that as well. So uh, having having checks, having extra authentication, extra little steps inside of this, notifications, all those things can all be done within pipelines as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to create pipelines. Now we showed you four steps on how to do it. We had to go ahead and enable the managed environments. We had to install the instrumentation, the pipeline instrumentation. We then had to configure the pipelines in the application, share that role, you know, to give, the ability, give the users the ability to deploy, and then after that, we're ready to use it. But once you have it done, yes, it does take 15 to 20 minutes to configure. Once it's done, it's going to save you hours and hours of time on debugging. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you found this useful, please go ahead and watch, uh, subscribe to our channel and watch other videos like this. You can also find uh, classes like this at pragmaticworks.com where we do things like hackathons, admin the day to lay out your environment properly, and we do things like virtual mentoring to get you unstuck. Thanks again. Have a great day.